Hey everybody, it's your girl Charlotte Van Horn with Black Expats in Panama and I am here today in lovely Costa del Este and uh, we're doing something different today. I'm out and uh, we went for a walk with um, Lisa and Winston and now we're going to interview them and let them tell us or let Lisa tell us um, how what her experience has been living in Costa del Este. So here we go. Hey, Elisa. Hey, Charlotte. Thank you so much for inviting us out and sharing Costa del Este with us today. Our we just wanted to we just wanted to say hello, and and here comes that sun. It is yep. is sunshine in in Panama, y'all. <laughs> we just wanted to say hello and ask you to tell us about yourself. You know what it's like being a black expat in Panama and how you chose this area. Okay, so uh, we started looking about seven years ago mm -hmm. and uh, my husband is from Jamaica and so I oh. wanted to go move to Jamaica but he, he says that he preferred to go somewhere else so we explored places that are close to home because we have children in the U.S. Uh -huh. and grandchildren and so it's a place warm. We were actually like running from the snow uh -huh. and so we started coming to Panama. We had read a lot of good things. We did our research. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time we came to Panama, we learned that the people are really nice. The culture is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned that there's a good healthcare system here. It's beautiful. The weather is great year-round. Mm -hmm. You don't mind the rain? Is it rainy oh, season? rainy season is my favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it's so green. Like yes. Right now, there's a lot of brown, like the grass Okay. Is but in rainy season, it usually only rains like a couple of hours a day. Yes. Usually the mornings are pretty like this. Yes. And it rains in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then the evenings are clear. Okay. So anyway, we were here for about a week. And mm -hmm. at the end of that week, we ended up buying a, a condo. What? Yeah. The first week? The very first trip, yeah. What year was that? That was in 2004. Oh my goodness! Oh, 2014. I'm sorry. 2014. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that was probably a good time because Costa del Este has really blossomed since then, right? It has. It wow. Has. So we really like Costa del Este as a neighborhood. We like it. It's kind of a self-contained community. Mm -hmm. Everything we need is here, uh, especially during some places like. Lockdown restrictions. Yes. It's nice to have things right at your fingertips. Yes, it is. And then the boardwalk, of course. Yes. You can walk here every, you know, every time we walk in the mornings, we walk, you know, four or five miles. Yes. Yeah. So, so where, um, where, what other? You didn't, you didn't consider any other places. Actually, we were looking at other places, but then once we came here, mm -hmm. we just decided to we liked it. I, so I stopped looking. That's that's what's up, you know, and a lot of people just say, you know, keep looking, keep looking. Yeah. But I mean, I guess when you know what you know, yes. then you know it, yes. you know. Yes. So do and, you... And uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess you could say that I'm kind of impulsive, so... Okay. Add that on to the part and <laughs> you got a pretty good picture. That is awesome. And yeah. so now do you get back to the States much or... Yes. When there's not a pandemic, we usually go once yes. or twice a year at least. And yeah. We travel all over the world. To yeah. Every year. So this is the first time we, we haven't traveled in over a year. Mm -hmm. it feels really weird, but have you have the well as as with the rest of us. You know, I mean, you are not alone, but yes. you know, thank God things are opening back up. Absolutely. How did you feel that Panama handled the um, pandemic overall? Mm -hmm. um, I was, am actually impressed, but I'm uh, not the sort of person who's going to be complaining about loss of, of personal freedoms. Yes. I'm concerned about my health um, more so. Yes. And so I appreciated the steps that they took. They, we were actually in lockdown for seven months from March of last year until October 12th is when they, and the borders were closed. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't go out. Yes, <laughs> yes. Go anywhere. And um, it was it was good. I mean, they you go into a store, you have to get your sanitizer, you have to put do your, your shoes feet, and, girl. Your they, shoes take your and alcohol, they take your temperature, and you have to 
wipe down your card or they'll do it for you. Yes. And everyone is takes it very seriously. Right? Yes. So we don't have the same problems that they have in the U.S. where there's, you know, anti maskers yes anti-vaxxers yes yeah. all, all of that <laughs> all of that you know I, I think that this whole pandemic has really taught me something about personal liberty and how I mean I guess coming from a country where we're supposed to have so much of it I'm surprised that I feel that there is a limit to yeah. you know my personal liberty when it yes. infringes upon your health Absolutely. or your liberty Absolutely. i definitely feel that way Absolutely. so speaking of health um do you know what do you what how do you feel the um the the health care is here in panama or have you had to use it and mm -hmm. is there available resources in costa del este yep so uh the health care system is good here um i would say that it's great if you live in the city mm -hmm. We do. Um, in the interior, there's uh, fewer hospitals, yeah. but in the city, there are various hospitals to choose from. The number one hospital here, it used to be called Pacific, uh, Pacifica Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Salud Pacifico now, and uh, the doctors there are trained in the U.S. They're trained and they're affiliated with um, hospital in the U.S. Okay. So, um, so that's where I usually go, but there are other great hospitals in the city as well. And uh, right now, I have uh, global health insurance. Okay. I can go anywhere and get, in the world. And get health care, uh, which is a nice uh, touch, but um, my husband decided to get local uh, health care because yes. he has um, Medicare available to him in the U.S. Yes. And so if he needed to have something big done, he could always go back to the U.S. So, okay, so you're saying, so not, he didn't get like a local, oh, it's not insurance, he just. He is, he does, he has local um, health insurance. Okay, I've never heard anyone mention that. So yeah. that might be something for folk to look yeah. into. So the way that it works here is that you usually, uh, the health care is, is, um, connected to a specific hospital mm -hmm. so you if, when you get your health care you are to go to that hospital okay so it's not like you have the freedom to just go anywhere which is kind of like in the u.s where you have a you know a, a primary care a primary physician private, private yes care. yes we do um uh, we go to Brees at the Golf uh, okay. Hospital, okay. and we really, really like it there. Yes. Um, they are very friendly to veterans yes. and uh, uh, U.S. veterans, and so that that really that helps. helps. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, you get to use the, mm -hmm. the Tricare, the Tricare, yeah, yes, which is perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That that definitely works out. Yeah. And so um, being you know black expats uh, coming to different countries. They always want to know because, and it's and it's reasonable because of all of the our experiences yes. in the United States. How do you feel? How does it feel different as a black woman living in Panama as opposed to the U.S. If there is a difference, mm -hmm. well, there's definitely a difference. Um, for one thing, Panama is well; it's all black and brown people primarily. Mm -hmm. I think about seven percent of the people in Panama are Caucasian. Okay. And so with that, I mean, if I'm walking down the street, everyone just assumes that I speak fluent Spanish. Yes. Because I look just like every other Everybody else. person. And yes. so it's it's an, it's almost like a non-issue. Okay. You know, I don't want to put it that strongly because I know that there's racism all over the world. Yes. And I'm sure I could find some mm -hmm. uh, if I look hard enough, but I've never had any problems here. That's good. That's good. And how do you find like making making friends? Um, so I have made friends. Well, first of all, I had, the first time we came, we actually have a friend that lives here. And so she was nice enough to have a little dinner party and invite all her expat friends. And so that's where I met my attorney. I met my, oh, wow. uh, my real estate uh, person. And so it's always nice when you can use someone that but that's someone you that's knows, right? exactly so, that's a direct yeah, a direct absolutely. referral absolutely. is extremely important yes. 
That is good. But aside from that, I belong to Internations, which is a group that uh, is very, I would say, with a strong presence in Panama City specifically. And so when I first came here, I joined Internations, and they have Internations all over the world. But I joined, and they have different areas of focus. And I focus on two things primarily. Okay. But, um, I would say primarily on giving back and volunteering. Yes. So I would go and um, work with little child, little girls who were in a uh, foster home. Okay. Um, I would work with elderly people in elderly home, and we would play bingo with them and pick them treats and stuff like that. Internations. Internations. Okay, I learned something else. And. Um, but there are lots of other things you can do. Like there's groups if you want to go and listen to jazz or go and drink wine. There's yes. A group for everything. Yes. So it provides you kind of a built-in network of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how about your Spanish? Um, my Spanish could use quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know enough to survive. Okay. Um, you know, I'm fine in a restaurant or a grocery store, and I can read it fairly well. Uh huh. I can speak it fairly well. Good. But when someone is speaking to me yes. fast, you, yes. know, you know, I can You get I it's hard. Never, it's challenging. I can never carry on a it's ch it's challenging. So, yeah, it, is. it is challenging. Yeah. And, and people need I mean, but I, I feel like it's so important to try. Absolutely. Because there are so many uh, relationships and opportunities yes. that we miss out on yes. when we don't communicate, yes. you know, or do the language. Yes. So uh, let's uh, let me see. And and everybody, this is just like an off the cuff interview. <laughs> we just chilling, right? So, but let me ask you. Okay, and I'm getting ready to get you out the sun because I see the sun is heating up, baby. <laughs> Free vitamin D. I know that's right. I'm glad. I'm glad to have it because I'm gonna be back to the states soon. Yep. But okay, so if you just had a thing off the top of your head, what do you think is your favorite thing about Panama? Well, the fa my favorite thing about Panama is the fact that you can you can have good weather year round, but also that you have exposure to so many types of terrains. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the beach, we have the mountains, we have and then just little small, you know, kind of really quaint little towns. I saw a hot springs. Yes, they're hot yeah, springs. Yeah, it's like yeah. stuff, everything is here. Absolutely. So, I'm looking forward to doing more exploring absolutely. myself. Yeah, so like last February, we mm -hmm. just got in our car and started driving. Yes. And we drove all the way up to Goketa and we stopped several places on the way. Mm -hmm. we took another couple with us. We had a wonderful time. We were there for about two weeks, just kind of on the road. Really? Yeah. That's Lovely. what's up. Yeah. So tell me what is, what would be your least favorite thing? Uh, the fact that I'm not that good at understanding Spanish. I think that the language barrier, mm -hmm. it is a barrier. Even yes, though I it is. I'm somewhat sufficient, mm -hmm. but um, it is a barrier. And mm -hmm. I agree that it's something that I need to focus more of my time on. It's up to me to take those steps. Yes. I have taken lessons, but yeah, I know, I know. I just, I just started uh, personal lessons, Good. and um, you know, I'm just gonna stick with it. And I think that yes. for me, that's gonna be the best thing because yes. I don't break appointments, and right. I don't like to show up to appointments unprepared. Right. So I think this right. is just the best uh, yes. way for me. Oh, we yes. got a reprieve uh, with the sun. I know, I, 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 I love the sun too. So. Um, I appreciate you talking to us and when you, in your free time, yes. you know, what is it that you like to do? What so are your hobbies? During the pandemic, so while well, I'm a photographer. Uh-huh. And hold on one second. She <laughs> is, you'll find her, um, her Instagram page on our Facebook group and you have some beautiful stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much. So yeah, so when I retired a couple of years ago, I picked up a camera because Lord always told me that I had a good eye. Yes. And so I got a camera and I just started picking with me everywhere I went. And I'm a street photographer, which means that I just like to do candid shots of people. I usually don't like to pose people. Yes. I just like to see everyday life. Yes. Um, so I do that. And then since the pandemic, I can't really do street photography because everyone's at home. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I belong to a couple of book clubs. Yes. And 
I do yoga every morning. Wow. And I walk and I like to cook. So I've been honing up my cooking skills. So, uh, but I, once the pandemic is over, I look forward to getting back into my volunteering and my other types of social life. Okay, so I always got to ask, and it seems silly, but I'm going to tell y'all, the, the ladies that watch these videos be like, girl, I'm so glad you asked. So on the critter factor, <laughs> on one to ten, where you at, girl? What you working with? So I have been lucky enough not to really see that many critters. I live on the 39th floor of uh, the building, and not many things come up that high. Yes, I noticed the higher you go, the less... You yeah, see. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty good. Now, when we went into the interior, like the Boqueca and whatnot, we actually didn't run into anything there either. Really? Uh, in Santa Fe, we ran into some mos mosquitoes, but I've never run into like uh, any type of like a scorpion or a spider, none of that. So, okay, so my thing is geckos. So, like, even when you're out and about in Costa del Este, you don't see them like out here, even? Yeah, there are some bushes. Yes. In this one spot, and whatever kind of bush that is, they like it. Across your path, but I mean, they're little tiny things. I know. Like, I've never seen one inside my house. Well, that's that's the good thing. That's the good thing, and I would just like to keep them outside my dwelling, okay? Yeah, yeah. And I think with the geckos, they're just so small. That's the scariest yeah, thing. Yeah. I think I'm less afraid of an iguana. Because I keep my big eye on that iguana. This yeah. dang on geckos, they could come through crevices. Yeah, and yeah. I know it's silly, but, but they still. Say that they, you know, eat other bugs. So. Yeah, whatever. I say I kill my own bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I kill my own bugs. I don't want no geckos for that. Um, so, lastly, you know, a lot of people that are watching this are going to be relocating to Panama. And, and what advice would you give to expats coming to Panama? One piece of advice that people usually give is come here, visit both in rainy and dry seasons so mm -hmm. you understand what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Look in more than one area so that you can figure out what's really the best area for you. For you. Of course, I didn't necessarily follow those, right. <laughs> those pieces of advice. Um, and, and it worked out fine for you. And it worked out fine for you. Mm -hmm. But, you know. That's, that's just me. I know everyone is not like that. They yes. They have more comfort level and what they're getting into. Um, so I would I would say that, and I would say you know make sure that you understand what the healthcare situation is and how you're going to address it. A lot of people just pay out of pocket for healthcare because it's a lot less expensive here. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you're in the hospital or something, that's right. fine. Right. Um, you know, figure out you know what area you want to live about the house learn spanish mm -hmm. or at least attempt to learn you know yes. get enough to get by yes and um Come on down, enjoy the sun. That's awesome, thank you. And let me just say something, you just mentioned about the health care and you know, paying as you go. Yes. You know, I'm really seeing a lot more younger people yes. that are talking about you know, uh, relocating to other countries. Yes. Normally we're just thinking about retirees, right. but that's a really good option for them Absolutely. because they're less likely to have major health problems right. anyway. Right. And even for the older people, a lot of them have Medicare in the United States. Yes. And if they got to do something major, they go home. Yes. You know what I'm okay. saying? So Absolutely. thank you for sharing that. Thank you for having me and Alfredo on your turf today. And I will see you soon. All right. Thank Carly. you. Some more condos. Nice. This 
That's the fitness center over there. And here is the kiddie pool for your girl, cause you know I'm scared of de I'm scared of deep water. <laughs> huh? That's the deeper pool. Yeah, I'm trying not to record them. And then that's the clubhouse. So this is where you can have your parties and stuff, right? And the fitness center. So when they have a clubhouse, do they let you use the pool as well with the rental? Wow, that's cool. They don't let us do that at ours. Oh, really? That's nice. This is the view from their balcony. I can see a lot of y'all black expats really liking it over here. I really like it. I really like it. I guess it's really pretty when the tide comes in. I can't get too close to the edge because y'all know I'm scared of stuff. <laughs> but it's nice. Yes. That's actually the canal out there, guys. Yes, it is. That's, that's what I know. I'm, I'm talking to my audience. Thank you. Why don't you ABC your way out of the conversation? I'm talking to my people right now. Yes, the corridor. And that's, yes, look at that. And there's the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the view from another room. In the Can you see yourself here, guys? Look at that. I love it. And you should feel the one thing y'all can't do is you can't feel the breeze, baby. You can feel the breeze. And she say, ain't them, ain't no geckos up this high. <laughs> Not kind of living. <laughs>